Hey guys, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, I thought I would uh, jump on, say hello, see if we can have a chat about anything related to carnivore diets. Um, any questions you may have? Um, any uh, anything you might want to ask about Japan? Anything like that? And uh, I've got about an hour today with you, so um, yeah. Please, uh, please let me know if uh, you want to uh, you want to talk about anything. All right, so we've got Rick. Hey, Rick. He's saying he's back. Not pop tarts. Not pop tarts. Okay. Um, and we've got Tea Cap Recipes saying hi. And we've got Brenda. Good evening. Hello, Brenda. How are you doing? All right, just so I don't miss on miss out on anything that you might ask, um, got uh, a request. If you put a question in there that you specifically want me to answer in session and read out, please uh, put a Q, a big Q, in front of your question, and uh, I will uh, I will find it much easier to uh, to see and get to. Sophia, how are you doing? Very nice to see you in. Thank you for joining. All right, and we've got Dawn coming in from West Virginia. Okay, suddenly that song uh, has popped into my head. What is it? West Virginia Mountain High Mama? I'm not sure. Um, all right, uh, and we've got uh, Marnie. Hello from Toronto. Hello, Marnie. How are you doing? And Johnny coming in from Palm Desert, California. Good to see you, Johnny. All right. Um, so we have got 26 people in, um, and I think we've rock ma Rocky Mountain High. That's right, Rick. Uh, we've got about 26 people in. So um, please, uh, please make sure you smash the like button. We've got about eight likes at the moment. Ten. All right. Nice. Thanks for those guys. Please give us a few more likes. We'll get more people in if you do that. We've got 31 people in. We're up to 12 likes. Let's go, go, go. All right, uh, and uh, Keith, here we go, Keith, start off with a question. Good morning. Would you recommend cutting out cheese? Keith from Blacktown, Australia. All right, so uh, to a fellow Aussie, I would say it's well worth testing. Um, I think that probably uh, someone who commented on my channel when I cut out cheese and I made a video about it, um, noted something that I hadn't thought of before and the re I, I lost weight on my stomach specifically very very quickly after I um, got rid of cheese and um, what I guess is what caused um, that sudden weight loss is probably not fat burning because it was very fast um, it was probably more that I had some low level of inflammation that generally wasn't bothering me, but there was some inflammation there. So perhaps I was retaining water because of that inflammation and cutting out the cheese after a few days of not doing the cheese, that inflammation disappeared because it was low level and the water went with it, I guess. That's my guess. Um, so I, I would say it's worth a try. All right. I would say it's worth a try. Um, and bullets is not a question. I just want to eat coconut oil and cook with it. Ah, oh, nice. Um, I've I've tried coconut oil, um, and it's nice. But I got a bit tired of my my food always tasting like the beach, so I uh, I gave that one away. Um, okay. Uh, greetings from Portugal. I'm sorry. I'm probably going to butcher your name. But is that Aves? Um, thank you for coming in. And we've got Hope from New York. Thank you, Hope. We've got Nancy coming in from Lincolnton, North Carolina. How are you doing, Nancy? Thank you very much for joining. We've got uh, Hole 180 from Montreal. Thanks for joining. We've got Rick. Take me home country road. That's it. Uh, take me home country road. And Shah, good evening. Good evening, Shah. How are you doing? We've got Chin Up. G'day, guys, from Perth, Western Australia. Nice. Uh, what time is it in Western Australia now? Is that like 6 a.m., 5 a.m., something like that? 
Um, and we've got Evelyn coming in from Toronto. Hey, Evelyn, how you doing? We've got um, oh, Tea Cup Recipe says, I do okay with cheese so far, but it may have to go at some point. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the longer I'm on this diet, I think everything's worth testing at some point, you know. Um, obviously, if it's not creating any major problems, then there's no rush. But yeah, everything's worth testing, taking out or, you know, that kind of thing at one point. Um, so via yeah, cheese is okay for me. Okay. Uh, whole 180. Remember to smash that thumb. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the reminder. And yes, um, please smash the like. We've got 51 people in only 31 likes. Please guys, come on, let's do it. Smash like, give me some more love. Okay. We're up to 32. Thank you. Whoever smashed then. Okay. And we've got John, anyone with dairy issues should consider raw. Interesting. Um, what out of interest? Why? Why is that? Um, you're talking. If we've got dairy issues, we should consider raw beef. Um, could you elaborate? Why is that the the case? I'm interested to know. I'm willing to try it. Like I can eat raw fish. I'm willing to try it, but I'd love to know why. Um, okay. Uh, Melody, Melody. Hello from Colorado Springs. Colorado. Thanks for coming in, uh, Melody Melody. And we've got Money Mac. I limit cheese, make it an occasional thing and make sure it's quality cheese. It can be a problem if it's modified milk ingredients. I think that could have been one of my bigger problems as well, actually, is I wasn't actually eating a quality cheese. Like I wasn't going to, you know, the import shop and buying a quality hard Parmesan cheese or something like that. I was just getting the random grated bagged stuff from the supermarket. So probably it wasn't the best anyway. Um, so I may not have a problem with cheese. It may be whatever's in that supermarket cheese. Um, okay. Whole 180. Okay. Hello to everyone. Uh, Brenda from Kentucky. Hey. And we've got Laurie from Wisconsin. How are you going? And we've got Richard coming in from Copper Hill, Tennessee. Thank you very much, Richard. And um, you are 99% of the time, you are the first person to comment on my videos. Thank you so much for that. Um, and we've got Evelyn. I felt much better without cheese. Okay. And chin up says 7.15 a.m. Okay. Oh, so you're only an hour behind Japan. Okay. Um, and Rick says, question, do you have ducks in Japan? Yes, we have ducks. Um, I'm not sure if, well, there are ducks in Japan. Um, well, yeah, well, we've got them in the river, so they must be kind of, I, I think they're native to Japan. Um, yeah, um, there are ducks around. There's not the same amount that you might find, I guess, in the States or in Australia, but, um, there are definitely ducks here. Um, the the water they're swimming around in though is not all that nice so i guess they probably uh they probably don't kick around too long they probably uh fly somewhere else and uh and and find nicer surrounds um so uh teacup recipes cheese with bacon and sardine omelet and that sounds really nice cheese with bacon and sardine omelet yum that actually sounds really good um and Sophia, I feel better with cheese. Okay. Uh, raw, ah, raw dairy. Ah, I see. Okay. Um, thanks, John. Yeah, that's something I, I do need to try. Um, Money Mac. Uh, low. And Bullet, stop the coconut oil. Just use butter and pork bacon fat as well. Also from Wisconsin. Nice. Okay. And what do we got? I've got to see if we've got some questions coming in here. Um, okay, bum, 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 okay, ah, here we go, here's one, <gasps> no cue, oh my goodness, lucky I found it, okay, so Steve says, how good is your Japanese? It's good enough to kind of get me around in a restaurant or a shop or something like that, but I've also, over the last 17 years, I've also become very good at pointing at things. And so that always gets me out of a tricky situation. Um, but it, it's not that bad, but it's not that good considering I've lived here 17 years. It really isn't. Um, okay. Timothy says, 
Hi from Mooresville, North Carolina. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, and uh, No Man Man is, is talking to Rick. So we're going to go to that exile. What do you think about butter? I heard one of the carnivores that I listened to saying he isn't big on eating butter. This is a good point, um, Hope. So for me personally, I enjoy the taste of butter. I really like butter. But um, as far as eating the butter, like a lot of the um, a lot of the carnivore people do, like just eating a stick of butter or whatever, I I did that and I enjoy it. But it's not um, it's not something that my body particularly enjoys. Like I spend uh, a lot of time in the bathroom when I'm doing that, so I had to reduce that and eventually cut it out so i'll fry in butter if i need to but uh, and i might add some butter to the top of some food but other than that um yeah i don't do the uh just eating the sticks of butter anymore um but that's not because i don't like the taste i do like the taste okay so sophia says do you have problems with water fowl um water fowl so um you mean infestation problems of like uh, water birds um, around or um, I'm sorry, Sophia, I'm not a hundred percent sure what you mean there. Um, uh, but uh, I guess not because I was struggling to think whether we had ducks or not. Um, okay. But uh, please, if I'm, I'm misunderstanding your question, I think so. Could you please maybe clarify it a little bit? Um, for my, it's eight o'clock in the morning and my brain's working particularly slowly this morning, slower than usual. Um, soccer nerds has any tips on stopping zero sugar energy drinks? Um, what I would be doing, I, I mean, one of the reasons, one of the ways I, I've never been much into the energy drinks. Um, I can only offer the advice from the perspective of, um, of, um, uh, giving up alcohol um and basically what i did is i just went to um soda water or carbonated water or sparkling water whatever you want to call it and i use that as a substitute because i feel like the carbonation in that um what it does is it kind of somewhat tricks your mind or your body or whatever into feeling like you're you know, you're still having that beer or you're still having that flavored drink or, or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I've, and if you put salt in it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so you might want to, um, you might want to try that. Um, so if it is, can you eat chicken? Uh, yes, I can, but I choose not to usually because I don't really like, I don't like chicken fat. Um, is is the thing I don't like um, I don't like chicken fat it's just always been a squeamish thing for me that I've never been able to get used to don't like chicken skin don't like any of that um, like when I eat chicken I prefer just chicken breast like if I'm eating chicken breast um, and it's you know cooked up with um, nice cheese and all that kind of thing um then it's nice, but, um, you know, as a carnivore now, the way I'd be eating chicken, it'd just be pretty dry and bland. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really go in for chicken so much. I'd rather eat um, beef or, or pork or something like that. Um, okay. So Jess says, howdy from Louisiana. Okay, we've got 67 people in. How many likes do we have? <gasps> this is a scandal, guys. We've got 67 people in the live stream and we've only got 44 likes. Please do me a massive favor and smash like. If you smash like, the good thing is we'll get more people into the live because that's how YouTube works. The more a live stream is liked, the more people just naturally get brought in and it happens super fast. So if you could smash the like button, I would really appreciate it. Okay. So howdy Jess. Um, and Nathan says, please no foul language. You do not know how much I love these dad jokes, Nathan. I love them. They are my, uh, they are my bread and butter, literally. Uh, Mark. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. And we've got Shark Air. Do they have Japanese sardines? 
do they have Japanese? I'm not sure. Um, they certainly sell sardines in Japan, but I'm not. Uh, I like whenever I buy sardines, I don't tend to go to the like the fresh counter. I would just buy tin sardines. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, if they've got uh, like sardines that are actually caught here. Okay. Um, so where are we? What are we doing? Uh, ba, ba, ba. Okay, here we go. No carb life. I'm new to your channel, so forgive me if you've addressed this before. What are your thoughts on coffee, black, or with heavy cream? Oh, this is a good question. All right. And um, I know that uh, whatever my answer is going to be, it's going to be controversial, right? Because you've got the, you've got one side who is, you know, it's got to be a hundred percent animal based or it's not carnivore. And you, um, you know, you've got other people that are like, I'm not giving up my coffee ever. So um, the way I see this is uh, I'm, I'm addicted to coffee. I'm happy to admit that. Um, and it's not the worst of the addictions I've had in my life. Um, and uh, coffee is kind of, I don't feel like I'm lacking in anything on the carnivore diet, but um, coffee is kind of the last thing I've got left. And again, I don't want to make it sound like I'm feeling like I, I lack anything on the carnivore diet. Um, but uh, coffee is just one of those kind of things that, you know, even even when I was um, addicted to sugar and addicted to alcohol and, and, and that kind of thing, still coffee was always the best thing out of everything, right? And um, so I just, I, I, I should give it away. I know I should give it away. I know I'll feel better. I know I'll probably get better results, but I just don't. Um, because yeah, it's just that last kind of little thing I've got on the side. So personally, I don't. Um, and you know, I kind of see coffee as someone who's doing carnivore, but they occasionally, I don't know, eat some, eat some leafy greens or something like that, just because, you know, they like it occasionally or whatever. Um, so yeah, look, if, if you like coffee, I would say, you know, and you want to keep it and it's, you don't feel like it's doing, um, that much, uh, that much, in a negative way as far as your diet or, you know, your sleep patterns and things like that are concerned, then I don't think it's a bad thing. Personally, I just drink it black. Um, that's, that's just me. I keep meaning to try it with butter. I keep meaning to try it with cream, but I just never do. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question in a very long and roundabout way. Um, okay. And on that subject, um, a B Ab Al Bab he says how uh, he or she I shouldn't assume gender sorry um, how is your sleep well um, it's uh, it it could be much better um, and one of the main reasons it could be much better coffee is one factor um, but one of the other reasons it could be much better is because I'm I'm just particularly time poor and um, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this live stream, which I'll actually get to in a moment. Um, but I'm I'm pretty time poor. And so um, I tend to get home late at night from work. Um, I do a bit of work on my computer when I get home. Um, so I'm exposed to that blue light um, up until basically I'm going to bed. And I only really get about five or six hours of sleep. Six is on the good end. Um, and, uh, yeah, so my sleep could be much better. Fortunately, being on the carnivore diet, I feel like my body is responding better to not having as much sleep than it used to, but I still, uh, I still realize that I should be getting better quality sleep. So it's something that I do need to address and work on. And that actually is why I'm doing this live stream today. So basically, I'm I'm as much as possible. I'm trying to put out some videos, uh, one video a day, um, as much as I can. And one of the reasons I'm doing that is because I know myself, um, for my carnivore journey when I was first getting started, especially, but still now, I really enjoy that I can go to um, particular. 
um, particular YouTubers and know, oh, they're going to have a new video I can watch today, right? And I like that regularity of knowing that, oh, you know, Sean Baker, for example, is going to have something coming out or, you know, um, this YouTuber is going to have something coming out. So I can always rely on going and, and, and checking that out and I've got something to listen to on the train or I've got something to listen to while I'm walking. And um, so I try and put a video out every day because I know that I enjoy, you know, that reliability from different YouTubers. So I try and do it myself. Today, I don't have one scheduled for today. And that's why I thought I'd jump on the live stream to just uh, kind of, you know, say hello and answer some questions. All right. And guys, 76 likes. Nice work. That's awesome. We've got almost the same number of likes as we've got people in the chat. But please, if you haven't smashed like it, please do it. And also, can I just say um, one other thing? Please um, also, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, can you please uh, subscribe? One thing that I have actually noticed recently is that, um, you know, the the number of people subscribing are going down. And I, I've worked out the reason for this. And that's because basically um, I'm appealing to my current audience. So what I've been putting out is obviously it's appealing to my current audience, but it's not bringing all the new people in. And that makes sense when you think about it, because recently I've been doing more interviews. And the interviews are probably going to be more appealing to people who are already on the carnivore diet or already know about carnivore or may already know those people that I'm interviewing. So, um, but I always appreciate the subscribes. So um, if you, uh, if you're not subscribed already um, and you do watch my videos, but you just haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe too. All right, so we've got 92 people in. We've got 81 likes. Give us a few more likes. Show us some love. Thank you. Okay. And uh, what do we got? Rick says, goose is very tasty. Mm. So I don't think I've had goose. Do you know in Scotland, which is where I was born, I don't know if they still do, but they certainly used to have guard geese. So rather, a lot of places didn't have guard dogs. They had guard geese. Um, so apparently the geese can get quite uh, quite aggressive. Um, all right. This is a good question from Corrigeen71. That sounds like a Scottish username. Corrigeen. Um, do you get bored with steak meat all the time? Personally, I don't. Um, I always... My, my perspective has changed a little bit on food over the last 12 months. But... Um, one thing that uh, one thing that has changed is I actually look forward to a meal more than I did before. But the other thing that's changed is I don't look at food the same way as I did before. Like food was always a thing to tide me over until the next thing to tide me over to the next thing to tide me over. And it's not like that anymore. Um, food is more of a functional thing now. I enjoy it, but it's more of a functional thing that I just, I need to prepare, eat, and then I'm done and I'm satisfied and I can go about with everything else. It's not this thing that, you know, stays in my mind all the time. And I think um, that's, I guess, once you've been eating this way for a couple of months, it start. I, I think it maybe starts to feel like that for most people that are, that, you know, stay on the carnivore diet and that's how they're able to stay on it. Um, okay. And Rick says impossible for me to get tired of steak. Yeah. Um, and look, as far as like, there's no, I can't cook a steak to save my life. Right. I live in Japan where it's, you know, everything's so small and it's, you, if you were cooking a steak, the whole house is, it's going to, um, end up stinking all the time so um it, i don't uh cook steak at home but when i go out to a nice restaurant and i have a really well uh i should well done i don't mean well done i think cooked well done but really well cooked steak um will well prepared i should say well prepared steak um it's uh it's you know perfect with lots of salt i love it with lots of salt um okay um, Anna says, can we put Joey at rest or into confinement as like Elizabeth Holmes? Nothing and no good. 
Um, oh, I must have missed something. Was someone talking about Joey? Um, for me, um, I mean, I kind of uh, recently Bart K did a reaction to or, or a review or a you know a reaction to um, Joey's video where Joey was talking about Bart K, and I watched that and I noticed that uh, there were a lot of people watching and and I think that draws in viewers because it's like a I don't it's it's bad to say it this way but it's like a little bit like a car accident right um you know you can't turn away from it you know <laughs> and uh, like i feel like joey's a nice guy but joey's kind of um i don't know what his direction is i think he's probably still trying to find out what his direction is or where he wants to go um with his diet with his channel with you know and um so he made that video about Bart. So of course Bart was going to respond and, um, and it makes sense that Bart responded. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it and I thought Bart's response was really funny, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I tend not to really think about Joey all that much anymore. Um, Cause his videos, I've started watching so many different channels and especially channels of some of the people I've interviewed that um joey's um joey's videos rarely get recommended in my feed anymore um yes smash that thumbs up for us yes please okay we got 96 people we got 91 likes let's go um just steak is not a good diet eat the whole animal okay um yeah i'm Pro, I, I get it that we should do that. Um, for me, I'm just uh, I'm time poor at this point, so I I don't do that. But uh, yeah, I acknowledge that I probably should, and um, I should get myself out to uh, an organs yakiniku shop recently. Oh, I need to tell you. Okay, so um, just for anyone who may not know, yakiniku um, is the the Japanese name for basically Korean barbecue restaurants, right? So um, Korean barbecue existed for a long time. Um, the Japanese saw it and went, we like this idea, and they brought it to Japan as well. At least I think that's the way it happened. And um, so it's called Yakiniku in Japan. And they have kind of regular, regular meat, Yakiniku, like skirt steaks and stuff like that you can cook up. But um, they uh, they also have um, specific Akinuku restaurants that just do organs. And I was walking down the road the other day and I noticed this one that I, I need to go to. And the name of this Yakiniku restaurant is Guts. G-U-T-S, right? It's, it specializes in only organs and it's called Guts. So I wonder if that would work in Australia or America or the UK. Um, all right. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay. Brad from Montana. Thanks for coming in. Um, we've got Rick says chicken fried in lard is delicious. Okay. D interested. Do you like chicken skin, Rick? Just out of interest. Um and John says, commercial chicken is unhealthy due to poor diet. Okay. And Johnny Boy Silver says, after 11 months as a carnivore, I haven't got tired of steak. Hamburger I get tired of, though. Uh, okay. But, yeah, it's got the... I mean, ultimately, steak tastes better than anything else, yeah? Um, it just, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know how these processes work, but yeah, it tastes better. Feral chicken is flavorful, though. We're, I, I'm just trying to imagine this feral chicken wandering around the city streets with this leather jacket on. <laughs> okay. And hey, Bob, how are you doing? Thanks for thanks for checking out the live. Um, Oh, nearly missed one. Ab, al -bab. Uh, Do you eat or drink anything before sleeping? Oh, I drink water. Um, but other than that, no. Occasionally, I'll have a, a no-alcohol beer. 
And in Japan, you can get no alcohol beer that's like zero calorie and, um, you know, zero alcohol. Um, and I mean, it can't be good for you, but occasionally I'll have that. But um, it, I mean, it isn't good for me because I don't feel as good when I wake up the next day. So, you know, um, le I've been having that less and less. Um, okay, Jess, thank you very much for smashing the like button. And we've got, oh my goodness, we've got 96 people in the stream. We've got 95 likes. Who are you? That one person. Who are you? <laughs> we are going to find you. Okay. So TCAP recipe says, like the video or Dave will start eating Pop-Tarts. Indeed. I will start eating Pop-Tarts. I'm going to eat some Pop-Tarts, guys. And Sophia says, no Pop-Tarts. <laughs> okay. Actually, um, also, guys, if you haven't checked out my interview um, with Claire on Claire's channel, um, beyond the scales please check that out as well um uh the uh, i didn't actually catch the premiere of that because of the time difference and work commitments that i've got but uh um i watched it back this morning and i was watching the live stream uh the chats tick by as i was watching the replay and uh the whole time people were chatting about pop dance <laughs> um okay so Boink 800 says, tomorrow I'll have some steak drowned in chicken liver. Ooh, interesting. Um, that's something I do need to try as well. I need to try some, like, I say organs, but also some uh, stuff like chicken liver, some organs like chicken liver. Um, all right. And we've got Canon N100 from North Idaho checking in. And then we've got Anna who says, I admire your ability to take on a challenge, i.e. your willingness to accept um, Kit, uh, uh, Kip's challenge of cheese. I'm following your ability to be flexible. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, Anna, I think stuff like that, the flexibility or and, and things like that, I, I think a little bit of that does definitely come from like a, a bit of a shift you have going on carnivore like i feel like um you 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 kind of i don't know subconsciously realize that oh i'm now eating what my body wants me to eat and i can kind of control the composition of my body to some degree or how i feel um to some degree um by just by altering what i'm eating all the time so i think that just makes it a little bit easier to do the challenges to go you know what i'm going to give up cheese um john says coffee is not carnivore and full of toxins um yep i don't dispute that at all um yeah i i'm i'm never gonna sit here and say coffee's good for you um it's uh yeah um i love my black tea with butter and almond milk interesting almond milk okay that's something i've never tried i probably would never try that now but um, yeah, I haven't tried that. Um, Rick says, I need to find some Pop-Tarts so I can video the ducks eating them. That would be really cool. And you know, I, I still can't get this image out of my mind, Rick, about one of your videos on your channel. You kind of opened the door and one of your ducks greeted you. And as soon as you started talking, it started wagging its tail. And I just thought that was such a cute thing. And I've always, that image keeps coming back to my mind whenever someone mentions ducks. Um, all right. And where are we? Tin sardines I've had are from the Philippines. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, and in Japan, I would I'd think if they're importing it, probably... It would uh, often be coming from places like the Philippines, yeah. Um, TCAP recipes. I gave up coffee in October. I'm for others having coffee, me not so much. I think, yeah, I, I think that's probably the way I would be. I've given it up before and I know I'm going to feel better. It's just it's just making that leap. Um, okay, David Linton says, Hi, Dave. I'm curious as to how much salt you use on a daily basis. I'm playing around with it at the moment and I'm a bit confused as to how much to use. I'm in too mad. 
Um, so I, I kind of treat the salt a little bit like I'm treating everything else, like my macros. I don't think about it at all. So I'm just at the, I should be using something better than this, right? I'm going to demonstrate with this bottle. I, I should be doing something better than this, but I'm just using table salt at the moment. And this is what I do. I open this bottle. I drink, um, you know, about this much water out of it. Um, because if it's full and I put salt into it, it's just going to go everywhere, like putting Mentos into Coca-Cola or something. So um, I, I drink a bit out of it, and then I just get the table salt, and I just go... And basically, I just keep going until the inside is white. And that might be too much, might be not enough, but yeah, I again, I'm... Uh, I'm kind of not i'm um, in in japan we would call it tekito which is kind of saying he's about he's approximating everything um and uh yeah it's just uh me going you know i don't have time to think about it i don't trying to measure out teaspoons or whatever so i'm just gonna shake it in so probably i'm having a lot of salt um oh take your coffee with one egg um oh that's something i'll need to try as well Okay. Ohio pigeon. Okay. So, um, Ohio pigeon, I guess you're from Ohio. And if that's the case, you're from the good morning state. And the reason I say that is because good morning in Japan is Ohio. Um, so cream and butter in coffee is good, but I might, uh, stop. Didn't feel good today. Uh, okay. Um, and chin up, man says i'm trying mct oil today what's your thoughts on this i've never i've never tried that i'm I'm actually not clear is mct oil the same as coconut oil or is it different or sometimes it's combined i'm, I'm not sure so um i i can't really give you a valid opinion on this because i'm i'm not really sure um Coffee with butter is excellent. Okay, I need to, I do need to try that. Okay, um, Boink says get one of the milk frothers for the egg. It goes really well with coffee. Oh yeah. Okay, I need to try that. Um, all right, and John says an obligate carnivore in the wild gets its greens from eating digestive tract of the prey. Ah, okay, got it. <gasps> Alia, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you in. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, Ronald, I drink coffee maybe once every five to six months, just not important. Mm. Um, B.D. Holton, I'm also new to this. Is it common for others to get constipated when starting no carb or meat diets? Um, speaking from experience, um, I found that... When I did Atkins back in 2000, um, I got quite constipated. Um, but in Atkin, when doing Atkins, you are kind of including some vegetables. So I don't know exactly what was constipating me. Um, when, uh, when I started carnivore um, or keto this time and then carnivore, it was kind of the opposite. Um, but uh, it cleared up pretty quickly um, after removing all the vegetables on keto. It didn't last too long and only comes back uh, diarrhea-wise if uh, I've got too much, if I'm having too much fat or too much warm rendered fat or something like that. Um, all right. Uh, Avalon Man. Is that Avalon Man from Perth? Hey, Dave, sorry if you've answered this already, but how did you get started on Carnivore? Um, is that Avi? Um, so basically, um, I started on keto. So I'd done low carb before um, and I needed to um, I needed to kind of heal myself of a few things that I was going to have to go into medication for otherwise. Um, and so um, I started keto. Um, and I was having a bad reaction on keto, um, said <laughs> diarrhea. And, um, 
And so I was searching around for why I might be having diarrhea because, again, my experience in the past had been I'd been a bit constipated when I'd been doing low carb before and um, found some videos that were explaining some of the problems with vegetables and how some vegetables are more problematic than others. And I was consuming some of the most problematic vegetables um, because I was thinking I was getting loads of vitamin C. And so I just decided to cut out the vegetables and see how I went. And lo and behold, it's all fixed. Um, Okie dokie. All right, we've got 112 people and 110 likes. Oh, my goodness. Who are those two people? Let's find them. Okay. So um, obviously I'm only joking. Um so addicted to antlers. Yes, I love seeing and listening to your videos, Dave. I love the live streams where we can chat and chat amongst our community. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and Jess says, already subscribed, got her notification for live. Oh, okay, nice. Um, Ronald Nichols, are you sure you're... Oh, okay, he's referring to uh, the previous uh, commenter. Uh, Sophia Green, already subscribed. Okay. Um, Boink, your body uses 100% of the meat you eat. Um, so I, I would say that's that seems to be the case. Be, um, definitely, I agree. Because um, after, after some time on the carnivore diet, what starts to happen is you might get the impression that you are constipated because you're not going to the bathroom as much as you were before. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing about not going to the bathroom as much as you were before, of course, you could be constipated, but majority of the time you don't have a feeling of being constipated. Um, it's just that you don't need to go. And that's because your body's able to use most of what you're eating as nourishment rather than going, this is all junk that he's eating. Oh, okay. There's, there's one molecule I might be able to use to patch up a hole in the wall somewhere and the rest I've just got to uh, trash it, you know? So that's not happening. And, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, you don't go as much. Um, okay. So that's a conversation between John and Ronald. Um, on special occasions, but daily use is not without consequences. Yeah, coffee is not without consequences, you know. Um, I mean, least of which is how it affects your sleep. But, of course, there's other things with the toxins as well. Uh, Sophia, a question. Are you taking any meds or off of them now? Good question. Um, I still take aspirin because my blood is unusually thick. I need to somehow get that tested to see what the state of my blood actually is um, to see whether I can come off the aspirin or not. Um, but I, I have to be cautious because, of course, I've got um, metal um, inside the aneurysm um, and I want to keep the blood as free-flowing past the aneurysm as possible. Um, okay, but apart from that, nothing else. Um, and you know, other than the threat of, um, other than the threat of having to do that drug for alcoholism, I, I haven't really, um, been on any drugs. They put me on an anti-epilepsy drug after I had, um, brain surgery, um, after the stroke, but, uh, that's basically the strongest drug I've been on in my life. Um, Okay, and so, oh, here we go. Canon in 106 years carnivore, 63 years old, feeling excellent. That's awesome to hear. That That is so nice to hear that people, firstly, that people are doing carnivore long-term. Secondly, they're doing carnivore long-term and they're thriving. And um, third, that at 63 years old, you're feeling so good. Like, on a regular diet, how many people at 63 are feeling good? You know? Um, nice. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see. Questions, questions. Um, here we go. Ah, they use geese to patrol army bases in the 70s in the UK. 
Really? That's interesting. Okay, so my gad geese story has uh, has some some fact behind it. Mm. And Ronald says, I've eaten carnivore for almost five years. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> and sorry, Boink says, geese are very territorial. And then Rick follows up with, um, I have been attacked by geese, but one went home with me for dinner later. <laughs> so who won that fight? Huh? Um, okay. Um, and we got so far. I got chased by geese. They are aggressive. When I started this live stream, I didn't think we'd um, end up discussing uh, discussing discussing the geese. This is awesome. Thank you, Alia. Appreciate it. Um, all right, John says carnivores in nature don't cook anything. Well, um, yeah, true. Okay, all right. Um, do do do. Where are I? Am I really behind? Oh, I'm really behind in these comments. Oh, I didn't realize how behind I was in these comments. I'm reading these thinking, isn't this stuff that I talked about, like about the geese, isn't this stuff that I talked about a really long time ago? So I'm going to go down to the bottom and go kind of work my way up a little bit. All right. Question. Dave, when you were on sad diet, did you lose your appendix? No, I didn't. No, never had a, uh, any issues with my appendix that um, that I know of. Um, okay, Wick goes carnivore. Dropping in to say hi. I've been following your channel for some time and you've inspired me in my own carnivore diet journey. Thank you. That's very nice. Um, all right. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry. I've been so behind with these. Um, all right. Christopher says, hello, Dave. I'm up late because I had a three-hour nap. Almond milk. Uh, still trying to be normal. Nice. Thanks for checking in, um, Christopher. Uh, Master Chief Burgess. Heidi, hi. Good thing this isn't Bart's channel or I'd be doing dusters for a month. <laughs> okay. Um, where are we? Do, do, do. Okay. Buck says, when I went ketovore, I had to quit coffee and tea. Made me too jittery. Haven't heard this from anyone else. I'd probably find if I gave it up, I would be calmer or something. I don't know. Like, even if it doesn't appear as you jittery, I'm sure there's some kind of, you know, it gives you some kind of DTs or something. Um Semi-retired Bob, I gave up coffee, coffee for a month once. I noticed no difference. I'm sure I'll do the no coffee thing at once, at least once more this year. Okay, and Sophia says, hi, semi-retired Bob. I'm so behind with these comments. Oh, my goodness. All right. And Amax says, pink Himalayan is the best salt to eat. Table salt is stripped of nutrients and bleach. Yeah, I, I need to fix that up. Um Okay. And Renaissance man, constipation clears up once your guy microbiome gets accustomed to the new way of eating, it'll fix itself. Yeah. Um semi retired Bob at Master Chief Burgess. No dusters for you since you let me off the hook last week. Um okay. Do 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 do. Well, Jennifer. Hi, Dave. This is my first live session with you. Thanks for coming in, Jennifer. Uh, okay, and Hope says, I just saw a video by Dr. Ken Berry. He said the coffee wasn't much of an issue. He tried both with and without. I have a feeling, Hope, that this is the um, this is the, the video of which you speak is <laughs> the video that started the nightmare with uh, Joey. Now, not that um, there's anything wrong with Ken Berry's video, but just that I think this is the video that Joey took issue with and um, then just started kind of uh, have, going at Ken Berry and, and then, you know, Joey's slide kind of happened from there. Um, okay. Uh, where are we? Uh, Amanda, so happy I caught your live. You're my favorite. Loves your interview with Claire. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers, and thanks for coming in, Amanda. 
Um, I oh, and Wax and Moon says I get my lab results tomorrow. Wish me luck with my doctor's reaction. Yeah, it'll be it, it, it's something to look forward to. I think it it's always something to go. You know, how are they going to react when they see that LDL? Um, okay, so I like to pick up duck and goose eggs when I find them. Which one's better, Rick? Duck eggs or goose eggs? Um, okay, and quail eggs. Sophia, how do quail eggs taste? Uh, Renaissance man, no carb life. Did you catch the reverse season three episodes? I haven't yet. I that's something I need to watch, and um. Yeah, I may try and watch that on the train today, given I don't have a video coming out. Uh, um, I don't have a video coming out today. Uh, Buck says, no referencing Joey fruitcake. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we used to have good busters come over to paint the goose eggs to get them to move to another lake. Ah, oh, goose busters. They are terribly messy creatures, especially if your dogs roll in poop. Ah, uh, I can imagine. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, that'll be, uh, I imagine that would be like, um, it would look like when penguins are like, yeah, I can imagine. John John says, if you had to choose between pink Himalayan and Redmond, which one and why? I'm guessing you've got the cue there because you want me to answer this, but I'm not sure because I don't think I've tried either of them so you know i'm i'm gonna go with the one with two words i'll go with pink himalayan i i honestly i don't know um okay many got popped in my mouth i like both eggs equally nice and sophia says quail eggs are delicious um wow even iguana eggs can be good Interesting. I would try that. I'm not sure I'd try the iguana, but I'd try the iguana eggs. Um, Jennifer, Dave, once wandered around on my uncle's 200 acres when a kid and a teenager cow growing his horns started following me around and wouldn't leave me alone. Had to climb a tree and wait for it to go. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Talking about goose chasing people. That's my story. <laughs> okay. Um, and... Reality says Redmond's okay. There's microplastics in cheap sea salt. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, I guess not. Uh, we shouldn't really be. Uh, we shouldn't really be going for well and sea salt. Yeah, I guess to be microplastics in that. If there's microplastics in the ocean, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm. I'm lost when it comes to most stuff like this um i just for me i've kind of just uh always taken the uh the tack that i'm uh you know doing just doing what my feels good for my body um okay so boo -doo -boo -boo. Oh, okay Nancy says, I appreciated number four the most on the reverse shows. The first three reminded me of the weight loss shows all over TV. Ooh, interesting. So maybe I should start by watching episode four. Check that out. Okay. Jennifer says, have you visited Texas? Great barbecue. No, I need to, I need to get back to the States. The only places I've been in the States are California and Nevada. Um, basically LA and Las Vegas. Those are the only two places. Um, lived in Los Angeles for about three months um, and traveled to Las Vegas a couple of times. Um, okay. Um, okay. Lots of votes for Redmond's here. Okay. I've just got to, still got to see if I can actually get that. Um, question. Have you tried a pinch of sea salt under the tongue followed by a glass of water to help with sleep? I haven't, but that might be another reason I should go and get some proper sea salt. Um, and so another vote for the reverse documentary from Sophia. And here we go. Saw interview with, uh, sorry, P. Raw, Emo, oh, Primal Raw Mike. Okay. 
Uh, saw interview with Claire. Awesome story. No two carnivores are the same. We all have different backgrounds, but one common thing among us should be a proper human diet carnivore. Agreed. All right, guys, I've got about five more minutes, and I'm sorry that I messed up and took so long reading the comments that I didn't get to all, all the questions. I've probably skipped some questions. If you want to chuck them in now, I've got four or five minutes left. Um, Dr. Kim Berry recommends Redmond Real Salt too. Um, okay, and yeah, Jennifer's saying, you need to visit Texas, and so a barbecue extravaganza. That would be awesome um redmond comes from the ancient salt deposits no plastic okay uh where are we da, 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 da. in the uk molden's sea salt is very good okay or modern sea salt from the uk is very good um and my life as a carnivore and more says i just can't give up my coffee get massive headaches if i do i put butter in my coffee though uh okay uh jennifer no problems thanks for coming in okay and christopher says i watched episode one of reverse and got as far as he had for organ meats in a jar i use pate not impressed with such wussy nonsense hey tony how you doing coffee is my vegetable of choice nice okay and all right all right. Alia says, my daughter was a bit, uh, well, my daughter was bit by a goose when she was four when we were fishing. Wow. So they're even more aggressive than I thought they were. Um, Tony, two months in now, down 420 to 362. That is awesome, Tony. Hey, Tony, if you'd like to come on the channel and talk about it, I'd love to uh, I'd love to have you on. Um, if you want, uh, shoot me an email at uh, realzerocarb at gmail.com and uh, let's set something up. Okay. But, guys, I'm going to have to head off now. Otherwise, I'm going to miss my train and uh, I'm going to be late for uh, workies. So I, uh, I better head off. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I think this is the most people I've had in the live um, at any one time. So uh, certainly, uh, certainly feels like it anyway. So thank you so much and uh, have a great day, great evening and uh, see you in that. And remember uh, on the weekend, um, on the weekend on uh, Saturday night, New York time, um, I'll be on with Intentional Carnivore and um, and uh, uh, Carnivore Kip. And uh, I believe we have a special guest joining us. And um, also, oh, my goodness. And just about to finish, uh, Professor K comes in. And um, also on Sunday or Saturday afternoon, I think, um, and or Sunday morning, Australia, New Zealand, Japan time, if uh, if Professor K is running his live stream, I will be on there too. So uh, see you soon. And uh, new video out tomorrow. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in, guys. And uh, I will see you soon. Bye.